some of the, the contacts that we have with our sister city relationship of Kumbo, which is located pretty much in the center of the Northwest province, has been nothing short of horrifying. From mass executions, to they weaponized the use of fire, to uh, whole villages being razed. Um, and this is being perpetrated pr primarily by the Cameroonian government and their security forces that have come in to crack down on what was initially peaceful protest when it came to the appointment of French-speaking teachers and lawyers and judges in an English-speaking area. You can imagine uh, the type of problems that that would uh, create. But nonetheless, we did have access to most of the top government officials, most of the uh, uh, ministries of the Cam uh, Cameroonian government, except for President Dia himself, um, who's been in power since the early 80s. He unfortunately took off to Geneva the day before we were set to meet with him. I don't know if that was coincidental or just a way to avoid this congressional delegation who was coming to deliver what we thought were going to be honest and frank conversations with him as leader of the Cameroonian uh, government. So over the last few years, again, we've had the executions, beheading, rape being used as an instrument uh, in this conflict. Again, uh, homes and villages being burnt to the ground young mothers grabbing their young children, fleeing into the bush. We have over half a million displaced people now from these regions. Some have moved internally uh, in country. Others have escaped into Nigeria or found other places of safety and refuge. But for whatever reason, the international community wasn't paying much attention to this at all. So the purpose of our trip was to try to elevate that. Uh, had a chance to meet with the diplomatic corps in Cameroon, all the other ambassadors from around the world, to encourage them to speak up and speak out against the violence being perpetrated there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but especially having a chance to meet with the defense minister, the, the head of uh, what's called the Beer Security Force, which is uh, a well-trained fighting force that uh, we've worked with in combating Boko Haram, which is establishing a strong presence in the northern part of Cameroon and throughout this uh, region. So where do we go from here? Um, I went over with Karen Bass, who is the chair of the subcommittee in charge of African Affairs, along with Jim Sensenbrenner, one of my colleagues here in Wisconsin. We have recently introduced a bipartisan resolution that we anticipate bringing up in Congress here in July that calls for the end of the violence, calls for a peaceful dialogue without preconditions so that there is reconciliation in this country again, and so that the fighting and the bloodshed stops in the Anglophone uh, region. We also have additional tools at our disposal. We have teamed in the past with training and security assistance with especially the beer forces to the north in combating Boko Haram. Recently, earlier this year, because of the human rights violations that we feel that the Cameroonian government was perpetrating in this region, we pulled back on a lot of that uh, security assistance. We've uh, demanded and actually written that none of the training or equipment uh, supplies that we're providing to the security forces in the battle against Boko Haram can be used in any way, shape, or form uh, in these provinces uh, where the internal fighting uh, is occurring. Uh, we also provide a lot of uh, federal aid in combating HIV and the spread of HIV in Cameroon. We had a chance to visit one of the HIV hospitals right in the, uh, the capital, and they're doing amazing things with that right now, and I'm sure they don't want to see that curtailed in any fashion. And finally, we give them a trade preference uh, under what's called a GOA. that makes it easier for them to be able to export some of their product into the United States. Uh, we have the power in Congress to ask for a review of that trade status with Cameroon, especially in light of known human rights violations. And that's another step that we are considering right now, again, to uh, get uh, President Bia and his government's attention that there are members of Congress who care. We are watching very closely. We are demanding a peaceful dialogue and an end to the violence uh, immediately and then some reconciliation and accommodation to the concerns that people in the Anglophone region of the Northwest and Southwest are raising, which I think are legit and need to be resolved and heard uh, by the government. A few of the people we had a chance to meet. Uh, I'm sure our friends group here in La Crosse will recognize a, a few of the faces. Sister Kathleen has been here in La Crosse on a number of occasions, and she was able to come again from Kumbo in order to be with us in the delegation along with these other gentlemen uh, from, from the region. This is one of the bishops of Bamenda, which is the capital of the Northwest uh, province. And all of them were there to offer their testimony uh, firsthand of what they are seeing, what they are accounting, what they are um, uh, experiencing in their own uh, neighborhoods, in their own 
uh, community. And I thought it was very helpful for our congressional delegation to hear directly from them, having just traveled the last day to, to be with us. And then finally, I had a chance to meet with some of uh, the Cameroonian students who actually have had a chance to go to school here in the United States. This young lady, uh, again, a resident of Bamenda, which is uh, the Northwest province, was actually a Nelson Mandela scholar going to school for a summer up at Stout. Uh, this gentleman here from Kumbo, our sister city, uh, went to school at North Carolina. He's currently had to escape to the capital to avoid the violence uh, back home, but he's studying engineering. This gentleman was uh, going to school at uh, Notre Dame. And so these are all very bright, uh, incredibly promising young Cameroonians looking for a better way of life, and yet all of them now are in the middle of this region that's experiencing just these atrocities and the conflict. And again, being able to hear directly from them what they are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis and what they are uh, encountering was incredibly powerful for our entire delegation. More work needs to be done. Uh, time is of the essence, and only time will tell just how responsive the Cameroonian government will be to our demands when we were there. We certainly intend to be following up with the contacts that we have now made. I'm certainly thankful that we have such a strong Friends of Cameroon here in La Crosse who's been able to provide me